Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I've been going through my blue drawers at the back looking at all the bits and pieces of ephemera that I've got and I've gone through and I've pulled out a little collection of bits and pieces of ephemera which I think all go in a particular theme. So I thought I'd use up some bits and pieces that I'd got through Hacker Mail and just natural collecting but also I realised that I haven't used my dilution sprays for a long time. I don't particularly like them that much because I don't like the way they stain and reactivate and you never seem to be able to keep them permanently on the page even with sealing with Mod Podge or, or matte medium or whatever. Um, so today it's just going to be a bit of a play and I'm going to see whether I can make something cohesive from all these bits and pieces that I've pulled out from my stash over in those blue drawers. So I will show you what I've created and then I will join you back at the end. So this is my small Dilusions journal. This is the five by eight. And this is a panel of self adhesive fabric. Now I've, this came to me uh, as a gift on a roll. Um, there was no label with it, no packaging with it. So I wasn't exactly sure where or what the manufacturer who designed this um, self adhesive fabric. Now I thought with the, having a ruler pattern on there that it might be Tim Holtz but I've done a Google search and I can't find this particular design under anything that he's done so um, either I'm not very good at searching or this isn't Tim Holtz so unfortunately I can't tell you where it came from. So as you can see I've covered my entire double page spread with that self adhesive fabric and not quite happy with the way that it's sitting on the page so with it being fairly low tack you can actually lift it up and stick it back down again without it gripping very very quickly. So my first thought is to use the titanium white acrylic paint from Reeves, add a little bit of water to it and then give the whole double page spread a little bit of a whitewash over the top just to knock that pattern into the background. However things don't go quite to plan. When I added the paint to the page it just immediately soaked straight in and disappeared. It's like magic. As you can see, no matter what I'm putting on, it's just disappearing. It's not staying on the surface. It's really, really bizarre. So obviously the paint is soaking between the fibres and disappearing off into the page behind, but it doesn't feel wet. So I have to have a rethink. What am I going to do? I know. I'm going to go and grab my gesso. So I grabbed my trusty white gesso from Indigo Blue. This is the G So Good. And I'm just going to put a little bit of the white gesso on my craft mat and then see what happens with that. And as you can see, it's pretty much doing the same thing. Now there is still some water on my craft mat and I'm wondering whether or not it's the water that's causing it to do it. So instead, I try it without water. I put it on neat and as you can see, it kind of does work. So now that I've actually got the paint to sit on the surface, I can add a little bit more to it. I kind of know where I'm going with it now, so I'm just going to use the gesso without any water and just hope for the best. So the gesso without water seems to work a little bit better than adding water to it. I think the water is causing it just to soak straight through. So I'm pretty happy with just adding that little bit of paint onto, oh, sorry, the gesso onto the page. Where there already was a little bit of water, it's still damp, so it's not sticking perfectly. So I'm just going to give it a heat and then move on. So my next thought is perhaps if I seal it, maybe it'll work better. So I've grabbed my matte medium from Mod Podge and I'm going to give the entire double page spread, once I've got rid of that huge gelatinous mess at the top, obviously my bottle's been sat on its side for a while, um, I'm going to give the entire double page spread a complete coating and hopefully that's going to seal it enough for me to be able to add the type of colours and the type of things that I want to on top.
so that's the entire double page spread covered in that matte medium. So while it's still a little bit wet and still a little bit tacky, I'm going to add on some bits of ephemera. Now I've been through my ephemera drawer. I've already collected a lot of stuff that I want to use in this art journal page. And it's in a little pile just by my left hand side. So while this Mod Podge is still viable, still a little bit wet, I'm going to start adding bits and pieces of ephemera from my drawer onto my double page spread. So most of the ephemera that I'm going to stick down was either stuff that I've gathered just in passing or it's been sent to me in happy mail from various different people. So I am doing a little bit of an exercise of trying to use up a little bit of the stuff that people have been sending me rather than it just sitting in a pile so I can stroke it. I actually want to start using some of this up now. So you will start seeing me use quite a lot of stuff from happy mail in the upcoming videos in the next month. So I've pretty much stuck down what I want to stick down with the matte medium now. I need something a little bit heavier. So I've got some uh, larger pieces of card and some heavier bits of ephemera that I want to use a more heavier gel medium on. So I'm just going to give my page a bit of a dry with a heat gun, make sure it's all nice and dry and I've got a nice surface to work on before I start adding on anything else. So this is the new super thick gel medium Slap It On from Indigo Blue and I'm one of the first to grab a pot of this and as you can see I have some heavier pieces of ephemera. I just found another piece of book text that I wanted to add to the page first. So this is a piece of cardstock with glitter on the back um, but I didn't want to use the glittery side so I'm actually buttering up the back side of the boat on that one and then you can see I have a cabinet card from I think it's a Tim Holtz lost family or found family, one of the two, um, and some more of that fabric. So I'm just going to put that down onto the page there and then you'll see me adding in all the other bits of pieces of ephemera over the top using that new slap it on extra thick gel medium. It makes a really nice change not to have to um, put the gel medium or the, the matte medium on with a brush. Actually being able to put it on with a spatula is quite refreshing and it's quite a nice little technique too because you do get a little bit of texture in your spatula passes so it is quite nice to use. So I'm happy with the layer, I'm happy with the arrangement so I'm just going to grab my heat gun and then just heat set that before I move on to the next step. I want to add some more texture to the page, so I'm going to be using the Winsor & Newton modelling paste and this is the Cargo Stencil by Tim Holtz. So I'm going to just random, well not randomly, I'm going to strategically um, put some of that modelling paste through the stencil just in three areas around the double page spread.
So I'm happy with the modeling paste exactly as is. I'm not going to add any more. So I just need to make sure that it is nice and dry before I start adding on some color. So for a change, I've got out some of my Dilutions ink sprays. This is the melted chocolate, and I'm just going to add a little bit of color to the top. Now I was going to just use the, the straw that comes with it, um, but instead I grabbed hold of a pipette because I wanted a little bit more than that was giving me. So I'm just going to daub a lot of that color across the top. Yes, I know it looks awful, but just give it a chance. Uh, and then <clears throat> I'm going to grab a little bit of a spritzer, and then I'm going to spray the Dilutions with it. And as you can see, it starts to wick, it starts to dissipate, and it actually starts to soak into that fabric at the back, which is absolutely perfect, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. And now that I'm happy it's doing what I want it to do, I'm just gonna repeat the process around the page with that melted chocolate until I'm really happy. So I'm really, really happy with the way that melted chocolate's working on this page. And I'm so happy with it, I've decided it's time to add a real pop of colour. And this is the Calypso Teal ink spray. And I'm going to do the same thing with that that I did with the melted chocolate. This is one of my most favorite color combinations, brown and turquoise or teal color. I just think they work so well together. And those of you that do follow my YouTube channel will actually see me use this color combination quite a lot in many of my art journal pages because as I said, it is one of my most favorite color combinations. So I'm really happy with the way the teal and the chocolate has melded together to create that beautiful kind of washed out background. So it's now time to move on. So I want to add some borders, some shadows around some of the elements of my art journal page. So for that, I'm using this um, Pit Artist pen, which is the Caput Mortem, that's the color. Caput Mortem is the colour, it's like a ready brown, so it will work really, really nicely with the page. And it's India ink, which means that while it's still wet, you can blend it. So you can smear it, you can smudge it, you can blend it, but once it's dry, it's permanent. So you do have quite a decent work time with it. Um, it will stay wet for a good minute or so, and then once it's actually had time to dry, you will not be able to budge it unless you put another um, colour over the top but it works best on a non-porous surface so you can write on non-porous surfaces with it and it works brilliantly for creating shadows. So I'm happy with those shadows, I'm happy with the low lights from that pit pen so it's time to add some splashes. So out comes the titanium white acrylic paint again, I'm just going to pop a little blob on my craft mat, add some water, get my fan brush there it is, and I'm just going to mix it up on my craft mat and then just add some white splatters around the page. And I'm fairly, fairly happy with the way this page has turned out so far. And of course, we can't finish the page off without having those splatters dried. So out comes my heat gun. I'm going to just go over it just to make sure that those splatters are nice and dry before I add my finishing touch. 
So one of the finishing touches is to have a border around the page and I'm just going to use the tree branch archival link and an ink blending tool and I'm just going to go around the edges of the page just giving it a little bit of a dark um, antique kind of um, aged look using that tree branch ink. So that's pretty much got rid of any stark white or cream edges around that page that was kind of detracting away from the content of the page. And I want to try and get rid of that lighter line on the crease of the page. So I've just brought up that pit pen again. I'm just going to add some more of that India ink down the crease just to make sure that there's no stark white lines to detract your eye. So very happy with the way the page is looking now, but there's one other thing which is missing. And I'm looking at the word journey and I'm just thinking it needs something else. So I've grabbed my small talk stickers from Tim Holt out of my drawer and I've just found the word together. And I'm just going on the edges with that tree branch archival link just to dirty it up a little bit. And I'm just going to stick it underneath the ship. So now, I've got a balance of the two words on either side. We've got journey on the left and the word together on the right. And I think that works much better. In fact, I'm so happy I'm calling this page complete. So there we go. So there's the art journal page all finished. So yeah, those dilutions work well on that kind of fabric. I mean, it's great when you put the, um, the, the ink on there and then spray it with water and just watch it dissipate into those fibers. So I did enjoy watching that happen. And I think I'm happy with the overall way that the page has turned out. But I think it's one of those ones that I'm gonna have to stare at for quite a while before I actually finally like it. But there you go. That's all from me for today. Um, if you have enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.